That's your fault. Get me hooked up from now on. <laughs> so, uh, he is our El Shaddai. To me, he is. He's all these things and more. I could have, I could have found more uh, in the scriptures if I'd have used the whole scripture. And uh, now say to thy soul, what is he to thee? What is uh, El Shaddai to you? He's everything. He ought to be. If he's not, you better get right with God. However, the glorious central fact of Christianity is that God has made a full and final revelation. We don't need somebody else to get a revelation of himself, which has made him understandable. We can understand him in the light of, of what he has said in the Word of God. Amen. He's accessible. Uh, you can get a hold of him if you want. Or you can run from him. And the simplest and most fearful to us, he has done so in a son through whom he made the world and who having humbled himself to take on himself our flesh and blood and by himself he purged our sins and has sat down at the right hand of the Father. I want to tell you, that does something for me. The disciples said, Lord, show us. And Jesus said, listen, if you've seen me, you've seen him. Now you're going to look at Charlie Jones from every side, and I'm not him. And I, I never will be. But one of these days, I am going to see him. Amen. And Jesus said unto him, have I been so long with you? And yet has... Thou not known me, Philip? Singled him out. He that has seen me has seen the Father. And how knowest thou then, you say, show us the Father. In Colossians 1.13 it says, Who had delivered us from the power of darkness and had translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son. Amen. In whom we have redemption <coughs> through the, his blood, even the forgiveness of our sin. I want to tell you, right here it talks about the preeminence of, of Jesus Christ. He's above everything. Nothing is close to him. Search the galaxies. He's beyond the galaxies and all the stars in heaven. Colossians 1, 15, it says, Who is in the image of the invisible God? You see, if you see... Jesus, you've seen God. The firstborn of every creature, for by him are all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. Boy, that is right straight from the word of God. I want to tell you, you ought to get a hold of it. You ought to get hold of You see Jesus. You've read the Bible. You've seen Jesus. He's the Word. Amen. I don't think I put that one in there. He, but He is the Word. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse uh, 6. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, has shined in our hearts. Amen. To give the light of the knowledge of God, the glory of God, in the face of Jesus Christ. Amen. It is this verse about the light, the knowledge of the glory of God being seen in the face of Jesus helps us the most here. Oh, get a hold of Jesus. Hmm? 1 John chapter 1 and verse 5. This then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. <clears throat> have I seen Jesus? Uh, there's some people that say they saw him. And uh, he was, was it 900 foot tall? I think they missed that one by about a million miles. <laughs> yeah, 
He has a big college, or he did have. I think he's passed on. But anyway, that God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled of the word of life. I like that. I like that. They said, we've seen him. We've seen him with our eyes. We've heard him with our ears. We've, we've touched him. Thomas said, no, I'm not going to believe unless I see him. But the others saw him. And so they were gathered together and Thomas wasn't there. And he walked in. Jesus walked in through the walls and said, Thomas, believe. It's me. It's Thomas. Touch me. I'm glad he's touchable. I told you this, some have frowned at that, but anyway, I had COVID and I was three, three um, days in the hospital and um, I was unconscious. I didn't know, I didn't know anybody around me. But on that third day, I heard, I heard the, the doctors, was it third day or the second day? Third day. I heard the doctors in the room and, and uh, I don't know, I was still sort of out. And they said, we're gonna have to put him on a ventilator. And so they talked about the pros and cons, and then they left. They went out of the room. <laughs> and uh, I heard somebody walk in. Yeah. You may not believe this, but I believe it. Oh. Somebody walked in that room and opened my eyes, and there was nobody there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you right now, I opened my eyes, nobody there. Go ahead and shout it. The rest of you on that row can too shout it. It really happened to me. I tell you, it happened. I opened my eyes. Nobody there. I was waiting for them to come back in so they could see that I was, I was okay. I was on the way to progress. I said, nobody's seen Jesus. Well, I'm, I would beg to differ with you. My hands have touched him. My eyes have seen him. My ears have heard him. That was John. That was John writing that. And notice, he said, we have heard him. Our eyes have seen him. We have looked on him. Our hands have handled him, the word of life. Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 1, God who had sun-dry times in diverse manners, spake in times past unto the fathers by the prophets, had in these last days unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heirs of all things. But also he made the worlds, who being in the brightness of glory and the express image of the person, and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins and sat down at the right hand of majesty on high. Oh, listen, you ought to see him. You ought to get a glimpse of him. How do you do that? Well, why don't you start reading the book of John? Read it and it'll do something for you. You okay? He's all right. I think he, did he go in the back? Oh, he's still okay. Oh, he's over there by Linda. Whoo, he's dangerous place now. But to see Jesus, I'm not some weird freak that's way out yonder. I'm a believer in Jesus Christ. I believe with all my heart. The burdens of our sinful society may weigh heavy upon you. A boulder in the ocean drowning us with despair. But we see Jesus. In the price of our redemption that he paid on the cross for our sins. <clears throat> the express living may trouble our minds when foods and funds have vanished. But listen, if you can get alone someplace, but we see Jesus. In the provisions of our daily needs, 
in the most unusual way. God is always there. I've never seen no wicked or the righteous. <laughs> Help me out there with the rest of that. Forsaken. Or his seed baked bread. God takes care of us. And he'll take care of you. The harshness of ungodly people in the world may leave us wondering if there is any hope for mankind. But I want to tell you, but we see Jesus. In the passionate care and concern of Christians for others in need. We ought to be like that. We may be tempted to doubt when God seems far away. And it seems like he cannot hear us. But we see Jesus in our prayers. That have been lifted to the throne of the God of grace. We may slip and fall and fail and flop and honor other things. We may. But I want to tell you, we see Jesus in his patience and his long suffering with our weakness day after day. But oh man, he gives us strength. Amen. We may be harassed, persecuted, and threatened of death, may be burdened our hearts with dread and worry. But we see Jesus in the peace he provides and calms the storms. Of our life. Amen. The fog of indecision may lead us into frustration. Do you ever get frustrated? You don't know what am I going to do? Which way am I going to go? Oh, listen, I want to tell you we see Jesus and we see the path He chooses and we see the path that He points out. And uh, His Word is the Holy Spirit. Amen. The hardness of men and women toward Christ may leave us feeling inadequate in trying to reach and help them. But we see Jesus in the power of a transformed life saved by his redeeming grace. God is not dead. There's a, a lot of people that think he's dead, but he's not dead. He is very much alive. The testimony of millions around the world Life may have many trials, but I want to tell you, if you'll see Jesus, a little poem that I found that I want to share with you, Thou art the everlasting word. The Father's only Son, God manifest, seen and heard, and heaven's beloved one. In thee most perfectly expressed, the Father's glory shines. Of the glory at deity possessed, eternal divine, True image of the infinite, whose essence is concealed, brightness of uncreated light, the heart of God revealed. I want to tell you, mankind, mm. mankind could see God, hear him. And touch him. Men and women could also know him in his words, actions, and by his death on the cross, he died for our sins. The radiance of the Lord. Sometimes I feel him real close, don't you? Want to be able almost to reach out and touch him. Jesus radiates the glory of God. That's the thought that I'm trying to share with you. The word brightness, which means to send forth light or out radiating. Like the bright beams of light that flow out from the sun. Hudson Taylor, the great desire for him was to win the Chinese people to Christ. So he spent his life doing just that. I wish that somebody was able to reach uh, our continent and reach down into Mexico. Amen? And not, not so many. Two million people have already come over here. Why didn't we send missionaries to Michigan and to all the world, one side to the other? And win people. 
David Livingston gave his life for the mission field of Africa. C.T. Studd, a very wealthy man, gave all that went to the mission field. When they asked him how he could do it, he said, If Christ be God and he died for me, then no sacrifice is too great for me <coughs> to make it. And C.T. Studd was one of the great soul winners of all time. D.L. Moody was told the world was getting uh, to be a, a better place. And he said, I picture the world as a wicked vessel drawing near and nearer to destruction. And may God give me a lifeboat. <coughs> and said, here, Moody, save all you can. And he won an estimated million people to God. These men were superhuman. When we read about these, they were just, they were just ordinary people. They submitted their self. Ordinary people that submitted their self to God and changed the direction of the world. <coughs> Study the great leaders in the Word of God. And they were just ordinary people. Like Joe Saberi. Close. Maybe not that close. Pretty close. Dennis Harvey, why are you looking at him? God could use you to win a million. Moses, talk to God. How many here has ever talked to God? Come on, if you ever prayed, you talked to God. Caleb asked for a mountain and he got it. Joshua knocked down the walls of Jericho. How could a, one person do that? Elijah he uh, baked a cake with fire from heaven. David killed a giant. Samson killed a thousand with a jawbone of an ass. David faced the lions. Gideon faced uh, mighty men of valor. But I want to tell you, he won. Gideon become a mighty man. Paul and Timothy and Titus turned the world upside down. They said, Is, are these that have turned the world upside down, are they coming here? I wish we could get some men that would turn the world upside down, don't you? And cause, causes my courage to mount up my heart to take wings when I realize that any man totally, completely surrendered can do exactly what these men did for the glory of God. Amen. Amen. 2 Corinthians 4.4 4. In whom God, the God of this world, has blinded the mind of them which believe not. Lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is in the image of God, should shine unto them. Oh, listen, I, I, I'm so proud of Brian Wilson that he has passed so many. There is nobody in, in this church history has passed out as many tracks as he had. Every service, he'll want another 100, 200, 300, 400, 500. Amen. Some of these teenagers, it'd be good if you all followed him or uh, 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 you sent them the direction they need to go and pass out tracks for the Amen. glory of God. Glory. That's right. I wish I had that kind of strength. For well, we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord. And ourselves are servants for Jesus' sake, for God. What did he do? He commanded the light to shine out of darkness has shined in our hearts. Amen. To give the light of the knowledge of the Lord God. We have, we have these treasures that I'm talking about in earthly vessels. That the excellency of the power may be in God and not of us. No flesh, no flesh will glorify in his presence. You, your flesh can't do it. Neither can mine. Because he is the creator of the universe. 
who grabbed the dust of the earth, made by his hands. Put it together. Made a man and breathed into him the breath of life and he become a living soul. Don't go too far, Adam. You got something I want. Turn sideways. He grabbed a rib out of him and he made a woman. Amen. Isn't that something? Oh, listen. Because he is the conqueror, uh, the conqueror of Satan who bruised his head at Calvary and still the eternal destiny uh, for many of us who have trusted Jesus Christ from the lake of fire because he is the ultimate of all power. Our Lord cannot be detained, distracted, destroyed. His words were spoken into existence by his own words. He cannot uh, be uh, destroyed because he has confirmed and proven his love and compassion uh, to the entire human race by giving his only begotten son. God gave him for us. Because he alone is the conqueror of death. Confirming that his word is true and providing security for us all. If we entrust him, the treasures of our soul to him, he will save and keep us from all for all eternity. In him we see. We see not only God, but we see his glory displayed. Amen. Isaiah 52 and verse 14, it says, As many as were astonished, that's what that word astoned means. His vesture was marred more than any man, and his farm more than the sons of men. That was Jesus Christ. Isaiah was prophesying that Jesus was going to come, and he was going to suffer. His vestige was so marred. How good of a God. To simply trust him as our Savior. I hope you get what I'm saying. Uh, and uh, he, he is present to us in the scripture. Not for our academic uh, contemplation or delight, but for our desperate need as sinners and weaklings. We need to trust him as our Savior. If we, we trust him, God will do something for us. Let me just say in closing with this. We see him in the manna in the Old Testament. It was in the tabernacle. They, they caught the manna as they were starving. They needed something to eat. And all they had to do was reach up and get it. It is only good for one day. God wants us to live every day of our life for the glory of God. Not to put it off until tomorrow. That, that manna, it turned, uh, it, it rotted. And they had to gather it again the next day and the next day. So is our lives. And uh, we see him in the water from the rock. God sent Moses and he smote the rock. When they were thirsty and couldn't get anything to drink, he gave them drink. He provided a pillar uh, of cloud that led the children of Israel by day. And the pillow of fire by night. God takes care of us. That's what Ruby was singing about. We need him in that witness of tabernacle. Every piece of furniture pointed to Jesus Christ. There was none that did not point to him. We see him strengthened in the arm of David as David killed the giant. We see his wisdom in Solomon. We see him parting the Red Sea. That's the same God that will take care of us. We see him knocking down the walls of Jericho. We see him in Joshua as he points to one hand at the moon and the other at the sun. Did you see the moon a couple nights ago? It was all glorious and big. It just came right up there and just kept going. I like this. I'm liable to... If I can, I'm liable to get a running spell. He pointed at the sun and the moon. 
And he said, stand still. And the moon and the sun stood still until God brought a victory for the children of Israel. Amen. Stand still. And what is Jehovah El Shaddai? To me, he's everything. That's what I've tried to preach about. And what is he? What is El Shaddai to you? He's everything. He'll take care of us. Amen. Uh, I think the musicians need to come. Uh, Jenny might. Jenny might not be here. 